Jesus. Well, thank you, our brother Michael, to join us. May the Lord grant that you benefit and use it for his purpose among your flock in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Our brother Chris on the road and has joined us at this time. May God Almighty grant him journey mercies and those in the vehicle with him, if the matter is such that they can hear, may they benefit as well in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So today we want to continue from where we stopped on Wednesday. This issue is about Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2. And I know that many people, what they really want to know is what really happened in the Garden of Eden, that is the fall. But you see, we don't just jump straight to that. We need to have the foundation absolutely put in place so that we are able, when we begin to teach others, to be able to answer correctly when they have problems. Last Wednesday, we stopped at the creation of Adam. So today, we want to continue from there. You will notice in Genesis chapter 1, concerning the creation of Adam, this is how the Bible put it. I read Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 28. Then I will explain. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cat, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. 28. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moved upon the earth. So, we start from here. I explained a little bit on Wednesday that the letters there is not Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. We've tried this enough. And I gave you a scripture, Isaiah 42, 5, telling clearly it is God who did everything on his own. So we can't, well, we're not going to waste time on that at all. So we move to verse 27. He says, and God created man in his own image. We've already settled the question about when God said, in the Austin said, let us make man. I said, that shows you that already his audience knew who man was and we have shown that man existed before Adam on this earth. He was not the first man. And Adam was not in the original creation of Genesis one, one. Okay, we've done that enough. So in 27, chapter 1, verse 27, now God has created Adam. And I explained to you that what God created was a spirit being. And of course, you know that a spirit ordinarily is invisible to the naked eye of man. But that's what God created. God is a spirit, his angels are spirits, and so he's now made another spirit who is man. Okay, right. And then I want you to look at what God now said to this man that he has created. But note something in verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. That him there is singular and it is masculine. But look at the next sentence. Male and female created he them. So instead of the he, male, him, singular, the next sentence says it is actually male and female that he created 
at that same moment that he created man in Adam, that's the same moment that he created male and female. What does that mean? What it means is every human being on the face of this earth, whatever time they're going to manifest, including those who have not been born yet, but any human being that will manifest on the face of this earth, God already knew them right in the situation of Genesis 1-1. From before the foundation of the world, God already knew them. And all these people were created at the same very moment that he created Adam. In other words, I was created the very moment that God created Adam. You who are listening to me now, and I'm older than you are, you were created at that same time. That child who reborn in the maternity of this night, that child was actually created in the time of Adam. And we know that ordinarily it is said that Adam was created around 6,000 years ago. So that means that time that we born this night was already created about 6,000 years ago. So what is different is the type of manifestation. Adam was the one that manifested about 6,000 years ago. And this child was manifested only this night when he or she is born in the maternity. But everybody was created at that same time. That's the reason the Bible said they created he, him, and immediately added, male and female created the death. So always remember that that is the purpose. But listen, this is what I'm going to. In verse 28, and God blessed them. You notice now, it is said he again. It is now plural. God blessed them. Meaning that what God created that day was not a singular spirit being. That's how you have to know it. Okay. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, their spirit now, remember? God is spirit. So God is talk, one spirit is talking to that spirit. So the Father God understood it. God said, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. This is where I'm going. Replenish the earth. For those who doubt that man was on the, on the face of this earth before Adam, why would God, in creating man, now say, I charge you, go and replenish the earth? What is the meaning of replenish? Replenish is not the same meaning as fill the earth. So replenish the earth does not mean fill the earth. Anytime you say to somebody, replenish. So maybe I'm drinking a glass of Coca-Cola. And I've drained the glass. If I say replenish, you cannot bring water and point to that glass. You are not replenishing. You are bringing another thing. For you to replenish my glass of Coca-Cola, you have to bring Coca-Cola, the type that was there before. That's the meaning of replenish. It's so simple. That shows you, if God said to man, replenish the earth, which means put back on the earth the man as man was already on the earth before. So that again proves to all those who want to think that Adam was the first man on this earth, that is not so. Adam came to replenish, to put back man again on the earth. That is the meaning of what this thing is all about. So we need to be very clear in our minds when we are talking about this thing. Replenish is filled with the same type, not with another one. It has to be absolutely definite, okay? All right. And you will notice, the Bible also added, Subdue it 
and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Say, have dominion. When you talk about dominion, what you are seeing is a kingdom perception. God has created man and is now saying, have dominion over everything that's on this earth. What does that make that man? He's making that man the ruler of that earth, the king of that earth. But please, don't make any mistake. Having dominion is not the same thing as having ownership. Ownership remains that of the creator. But he's now allowing his creature to rule over that place on his behalf. So that is what kingship is all about. So you can see that at all times from the very word go, what God meant for this earth is that he is establishing a kingdom replicate of the kingdom of heaven on this earth. That is something that is lost to many churches. Christ never preached religion. Christ came to preach a kingdom. Check. When Christ came down from the uh, Mount, from Mount Temptation to start his ministry, the first thing he said was, repent. And then he said also, um, how did he put it? For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's what he came to do, to preach. And throughout his entire ministry, it was about kingdom. Because the purpose of God to create the earth among the universe he created is to make it a kingdom that is like the kingdom in heaven. So when Jesus was here, they asked him, Teach us how to pray. What did he say? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Which means God has a kingdom up there. And he said, thy kingdom come. So thy kingdom come in here. He says, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. You see, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus was, the, as your teachers said to pray, he told them pray for the kingdom of God to be established here. But man today is going to talk about religion. Just make up the things he wants to say and moving away from what Christ said to say. So I hope you see it there now, you know, that you understand that God created man, male and female, at the same time, every human being, in spirit. And their job was to replenish the earth with man. Replenish meaning put back that which was there before. And then the earth will be a kingdom dominated by man. That's, that's what it is. That's how God made this thing. But there's a wrong teaching that I know is a lot of people are saying, especially those who say that in the end time message. And it's something that's coming mainly from America. Those who call themselves prophecy teachers over there. And what is it? They say, they accept that Genesis 1-1 was a creation different from the Adamic one. They accept that. However, what they say is that that creation was a creation of animals, huge animals. You see, these gigantic animals, dinosaurs and the rest of them. That is how they look at it. And then the angelic beings of God 
were superintending over this earth that contained all these huge animals. And finally, when Lucifer fell, then God wiped out all of them. It is not correct. Don't believe it. What those huge animals, dinosaurs and cold, they were here. No question. No man can dispute that. When you go abroad, instead of going to do shopping, like most Nigerians do, all they know is where the shops are. Try and go and visit museums. You will see the skeletons of these animals that they were in the Genesis 1-1 creation. None of them is on earth today. It's archaeology that brought up their skeletons. They are really huge. And in case you want to doubt, I always tell you, I say every Bible question has a Bible answer. But we cannot go into it, but I'm going to give you what you should read on your own at home. Please note it down. I'm talking about the prehistoric animals. Because what you see in Genesis 1 1 and Genesis 1 2, we are talking about prehistoric times. That's what Genesis 1 1, Genesis 1 2. That is prehistoric time. Okay. So, in that time, there were some animals on earth that, were, that are not here. Those example, very huge. If it's not that this is Wednesday Fellowship, I will have even given you sizes of some of them to show you that we don't have any type like that in existence today. But Bible tells us when you go to Job, the book of Job, if you look at Job 40, verse 15, try and read that, read, read that on your own. Job chapter 40, verse 15, and Job chapter 40, verse 1. To understand, in terms of age, in terms of age, the oldest book in the Bible is the book of Job. It was written before Moses wrote Genesis. And what I want to say to you is, at home today, please read Job 14, Job 41. In Job uh, 40, Bible talks about, yes, Job, uh, the Bible talks about a land a land animal called the behemoth, land animal, a prehistoric land animal called behemoth, B E H E M T H. You find it there. Then in Job 41, verse 1, it talks about a sea, a prehistoric sea animal called the delta. That Leviathan is even used to tie Satan. Symbol of pride, arrogance. It's so powerful that it just looks down on everybody and everything. So go and read. You see, these were on this earth at that time. You were not them on this earth now. They were very, very. They all died in, all destroyed in Genesis 1 2, when the earth became uh, void. Oh, by the way, I need to make a correction. On Wednesday, I told you that uh, the world became what? Well, that was wrong. The world became is higher. 
H A Y H. H A A H. Virus that and the earth was without form. I told you that in original Hebrew is and the earth became. That was is higher in Hebrew, but Bara is creates. When God creates in Hebrew, that means Bara. Okay, I just need to make that correction. All right, so you see, in that time, it was so huge. Everything was huge, completely. The birds at that time, the wingspan of the birds at that time, is even wider than, than some living rooms today, some palace today. The wingspan. It's unbelievable. Everything around was really, really gigantic. We thought it was the, 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 the sign of that everything was huge. Whether it's Bado or it's Mano or it's Fish, it was absolutely tremendously huge. Okay? So, I'll tell you something. When we come to Genesis chapter 2, I will take something. I've told you about hugeness now. So when we get to Genesis chapter 2, I will come back to this issue of hugeness. So let's look at Genesis chapter 2 now. Who has a watch here? Please give me a watch. Genesis chapter 2, you know, because I'm very just now to, to preach. So thank you. I'm rushing get as much as I can into what I'm preaching. So Genesis chapter two, I want us to look at verse five. So God has now finished creation, creating man. Man, everything that God did was in spirit form. Then <coughs> God for the seventh day. Then the Bible gave us an idea of what was around at that time. In verse 5, the Bible says, Genesis chapter 2, verse 5. The Bible says, And every plant of field before it was in the earth, I have of the field before it grew. For God was to raise the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. So as at that time that God created Adam in the spirit, there was nothing we could physically see on this earth. There was no water, no nothing else in the earth. That's why Noah, the scientific world at that time said to Noah, shut up, stop lying. We have used our humans and there's no, no water anywhere before it. You have seen it. We have God has told us that. Yeah. Okay. Then, God, all the water from the earth, the earth came from under the ground. And in verse 7, which is important, the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. What from creation in 128 is a spirit. You don't see a spirit. In chapter 2, verse 7 of Genesis, God took dust from the created earth already. That's why he used the word create and said form. Because if God has said create, creation is bringing something up from our nothing. But when you say form, it means you are doing that thing from something that was already existing. And what was already existing was the earth. So God took dust from there and then he formed a body. He formed a body and put the spirit that created in 128 into that body. And having done that, he breathed on the what he has, what he has done there, 
and the Bible says became a living soul. So when you are looking at man today, as I said on Wednesday, he is spirit, soul, and body. And for those who want to argue that, well, but the Bible did not really say so, you are interpreting it. It makes sense of the Bible. Go to Job, Job 33 and see what the Bible says. In Job chapter 33, I deliberately want us to see it because it's not something that we normally see. In Job 33, I want to read verses 4 and 6. Job 33, verses 4 and 6. It says, The Spirit of God had made me. So that means crown in spirit. Man is a spirit being. And the breath of Almighty had given me life. See, the of me, the breath of me, and that means man is a verse six. Behold, according to thy wish in God's stead, I also am formed out of the I found out of this ground. That means man is also a body. You can see in both spirit and body. It is so that little body will come to life. Then in verse. Nine, let uh, chapter eight verse for uh, chapter two. Genesis always. We are still in Genesis. Genesis. I normally move to Job, but I'm back in Genesis. Genesis chapter two verse eight. The verse. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in, in and then He put the man whom He had. Form. So now, man is a spirit, but this spirit is in a body and it has a soul. So we can see him, we can see him, we can feel him, everything. So God put him in a garden which he planted east of Eden. That means there was a place called Eden, and then this garden is east of east of Eden. Verse 9 is where we are going to listen very carefully and look at your scripture. Verse 9, Genesis chapter 2, verse 9. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow, out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So straight away, we are looking at four trees here. One, the tree that is pleasant to the sight. Tree that is pleasant to the sight. We are talking about horticultural and uh, and decorative trees. You look at them, they cool. You see them anywhere. Then there's a second one. The tree that is good for food. The first one is good to look at. The second one is good for food. It is edible and it's a fruit producing tree. The tree of life. 
that is the tree that gives the third life giving tree that's the third one then that the fourth tree the tree of knowledge of good and evil that is the tree of enlightenment and a death producing tree those are the four trees mentioned there but i want That group. So, this is what we want to ask ourselves. Where will the districts now? One good for the eyes, one good for food. They said they were going out of the ground. Which ground? Ground of Eve or our garden of Eden or the ordinary ground. Let the Bible speak. Don't speak for the Bible. So let's go back to Genesis chapter 1. Look at verses 11 and 12. See what God did. Genesis chapter 1, verse 11. And God said, let the earth bring up grass, the herb yield, and the fruit tree, yielding fruit after its kind, whose seed is in the self upon the earth, and it was so. Let me repeat. Let the, let the garden of Eden the answer is no. He said, let bring herb yielding seed, fruit tree, yielding fruit. Verse 12. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after its kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself. After its kind, God saw that it was good. Show you for when we get back to that where we are looking at, it shows you therefore that the two trees, one good to one good for one good to the side and the one that we eat, out of the ground is the ground of the whole earth, it's not referring to the garden of Egypt. The earth of Eden was part of the earth, so it was also growing. The Bible deliberately put you to it for you to understand that God is trying to say something. Because the next two trees, notice there's nothing in the Bible that says they came out of the ground. It just told us this was came out of the ground, and right away it now talks about these other two, the two of life. And the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And he said they were in the midst of the garden. So let people understand very clearly that God was trying to tell us something there. And don't begin to think that the tree of life was going there and the tree of world good and evil was going No, that is just not correct. All right. So the location is very clear. And the Garden of Eden itself is not more than just a little paradise, a little heaven on this earth. That's all. A little heaven on this earth. Remember, the time of the creation of Adam, 
He was an eternal being. Don't you ever forget that. Adam was eternal being. If Adam was eternal being, it means you and I at our creation were also eternal beings. Please put that at the back of your head. So at that time, when Adam waited, you know, always remember, always remember that because it's in thought. Okay. I'm talking about before he fell. You understand? That before he fell. Okay. And so were we. But after the fall, Adam became a product of time. So, strictly speaking, when Adam was in the garden, it was not counted. I want you to know that. Because he was eternal. When you want eternal, you cannot use the word time at the same time. Eternality is different from time. When he was created, he was your eternal being. Therefore, there was no time counting for him. But the moment he fell, entered. And that's how we fell knowing what we call age. It was before we got that about. And you want to argue, I said, and, and if you want to argue, I tell you, if you want to argue, I tell you, be careful, never, just, never happened here now. So that's why you cannot see my but you can hear my voice. We are trying to switch on to the so don't worry. So we are now eternal. Now we are in time. When we go in rapture, then we come back on this earth with Jesus Christ during the second advent. Then we have the millennial reign. Of 1,000 years, then we have the death throne judgment, then everything evil and bad destroyed, we will now go back into eternality, to eternal age. From that moment we go back, time ceases to come for us. So what I'm trying to explain to you about Adam is very clear. He was created an eternal being. We were all created inside of him. That's why the Bible says, and so God created man, male and female created he them. So all of us were created by them. We were eternal beings. How the fall came later. How long it took between when Adam was created and when he fell, we do not know. The Bible did not tell us. But if who wants to listen to the Jews in their traditions, and in the records, what you will see, we we'll put on the generator now. What you will see is that Jews will tell you that the thing happened, that the fall, the fall came about seven years after they had the garden. The Bible does not say so, but that is the tradition of Jews. That is what is in their sacred books. But don't bother yourself about that. Just know that Adam was created and then he fell. All right. And when he fell, time, time began. So this Garden of Eden, when and if were there, that place was just a little heaven on this. It was paradise to give to Adam. Because while he was in the Garden of Eden with, with his Eve, heaven was open to them. They saw heaven from the earth. Nothing was hidden. And Adam and Eve knew God face to face in a certain form. Don't ask me what the form is. The Bible did not tell us. But God was always there with them in the evening for fellowship. So they were not fellowshipping with Jews. So God was in what we call a theophany. 
which means in the body. What type of body it was, we don't know. So don't bother to speculate. But just know that they were having friendship with God every evening. So if they could be having friendship with God in giving hours, would angels be a big deal to them? Absolutely not. Why? Because they themselves were angels. Man is also an angel. You see? So this is what this matter is all about. And you must understand this clearly. So that's what Garden of Eden was. Those who talk big grammar, they call it, they say the beatific vision. That's what they had in the garden. You know, while he was there in the garden, Adam had power to do practically everything. Adam had power to tell a whole mountain to get up and he moved to somewhere else. So if you are in the Kohiwa we are now, Adam had power to say to any mountain around the Kohiwa, transfer to Abekuta and to go straight away. So just understand what God created, okay? All right. So they were in this garden. And then we want to look at verse 15, verses 15 to 17. So after God had put man then, then he spoke again. 15 says, and the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, now listen to the warning. Listen to the warning. At the time that God was giving man this warning, Adam was already in the flesh. So he was a visible being. And the Lord God, verse 16, chapter 2, Genesis, says, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat. Eat any fruit in the garden. 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Adam was in the flesh. There was no Eve yet. But Adam was in the flesh. Looking as I'm looking now. Full man. But we can't see. But was an eternal being. And God said, my son, be very careful. Because Adam was son of God. In case you don't believe me, go and check Luke chapter 3, verse 38. You see how God described Adam, child and son of God. Okay. So he said, eat all as much as you want. But of the tree of knowledge, don't touch it. You see, that tree of knowledge of good and evil is not more than the tree of conscience. Text and say we are fellowship. You should know that. So, so that tree of uh, knowledge of good and evil is just nothing else other than the tree of conscience, giving knowledge to man of good and evil. When you look at those two trees there, I don't want to spend time on it. When you look at those two trees of life and tree of death, who is the tree of life? The answer is obvious, Jesus. 
So if Jesus is the tree of life, the opposite of tree of life has to be who else? But Satan. So you follow Jesus Christ, you have life. You follow Satan, you have all the things, but at the end of it, you die. Everything we are depending on here and now today is coming from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That is why we have to face the judgment. If you have just, just taken the tree of life, there's no judgment because you are living from God by his Christ. So I cannot tell you about the two trees here now because that will take a that at the end of the day, the tree of life is Jesus, and the other side is Satan. And everything that you have here now on earth is all coming from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And that is why all of it that we have, we call it science, we call it technology, development, all of it will finally end up in death and destruction. So it shows you there's nothing there. And God said, when you eat it, in the day that you eat it, you will surely die. So what is he talking about? You will surely die in the day. They tell us it's a lie. Because they'll say, The day tree, that that fruit, that day you die. Then they will say, We've read your Bible. And after Adam ate that tree, Adam still lives 930 years. So your Bible is not true. It is because they lack understanding. In the day you eat it, you surely die. So if you ask yourself, what does it mean? Now? No, you don't know the day. The day means 1,000 years. Because the Bible teaches us that one day in the sight of 1,000 years Within the space of 1,000 years, you will surely die physically. No, you cease to exist. In the day, within the day, within 1,000 years. But death is in two types. There is spiritual death and there is physical death. That particular day, that moment that Adam died spiritually, that moment, he was separated from God, that moment. That position he had in the Garden of Eden, whereby he could see heaven, he could mix with the angels and so on, the God could come to him, he missed it immediately. It was now over and completely destroyed. So the Garden of Eden, was no longer that kind of paradise that God meant to be for him. He died spiritually, but he was still breathing. And he went on to breathe and live for 930 years. That means of in the day, that is within that day. So those who are criticizing us don't know what they are talking about, you know? It's just when they don't know these things, they think they have an idea. They're looking for anything to, to create problems for, for man, but they, they don't know what they're saying. Then we want to look at verse, verses 18 to 23. 
Genesis chapter 2, 18 to 23. And the Lord God said, that's, that's 18, verse chapter 2 of Genesis. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him an head meet for him. 19. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam. That was already formed Adam in the flesh before he ever formed any other thing on earth. You understand? In verse 19, and out of the ground, how from where did God form Adam? out of the ground. But that was in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. So 17 verses later in Genesis chapter 2 verse 19, God now formed out of the same ground where he formed Adam, God now formed all these every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and then he brought them to Adam and ask them, Adam to name them. So you see, Adam was in the flesh before there was ever any. Adam was already here. That is why the flesh of man is actually the same as the flesh of the animal. That is why people eat man, flesh, the cannibals. Today, when you say cannibals, they say, yeah, 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 yeah. But there are parts of the world where they eat flesh, human flesh. You know, and human flesh is taken exactly from, you know, in the spirit we are like God. In the flesh, we are like the animals. That is why we are the head of the animal world. Don't you know that? In your elementary lecture study, in biology, when you go to secondary school, where is man placed? You can see it's because, don't you notice, every medication when you go man wants to do medical technology, what do they do? They go and test it in the animal first. That should tell you something now. <laughs> you know? That should tell you the relationship of man to the animal around to notice that in the spirit, when God was created in the spirit, he created all these things before Adam. So go back to Genesis chapter 1, you see. He created, in the fifth day, he created the fish. Create, not for fish and the birds. On the sixth day, he created the animals that move on the earth, and finally he created man. But these ones were created first. However, when it came to putting them in a body, he put man first. Because we are to have dominion over them. Do you understand these things? See how God, God is a master fixer in everything is doing. He doesn't allow nonsense. Okay, let's continue. Verse 20. Adam named all of these animals. Every animal you see in the world today, Adam named him. I want to ask yourself, what kind of brain did he have? As I said in the sometime last week, people have difficulty when they have too many children. You see some who have 40 children. And I've done something discovered about which, 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 which of my wives is your mother? And what's your owner? You know, 
You can remember, maybe not 20 children. But here is Adam. Everything that was on the earth. The book of I want you to see that, and then in verse 20, and Agam gave names to all the cattle and all the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found an help made for him. Verse 21, and Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he, God, took one of his ribs, Adam's ribs, and closed up the flesh. Instead thereof, we can see that now. Surgery, right take place there. God is the master physician. 22. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. 23. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. In Hebrew, that is Isha. It shall be called in Hebrew, that one. And it's S -S -H -A. So you can see. But after Adam was already in the flesh, he stood beside Kukeri, and from that he molded himself out. His name, her name would be woman because she was taken out of man. So actually, man and woman are the same thing. As I always say, I say, I always say to you that a man. Is a woman without a woman, or a woman is a man with a woman. You know, so that's how the idea of marriage came to be. Marriage is the idea of God; it is not the idea of man. Today we are saying man can marry man, woman can marry man. Is that what God told us here? No. The Democratic Party in America. Biden did not get any work to do. He has started telling Nigeria about uh, same-sex marriage. We should not punish people for it here. We don't get sense. It's unfortunate that that's a stupid man like Trump. Otherwise, the Democratic Party should never do it. They are the party of the devil. No question about that. But Trump was just no good. So, but I just want to know that this is how God created everything. And so, you see now how everything came about. So finally, you find that uh, uh, Eve now came up. He was Adam's wife. And God gave a decree in Genesis chapter 2, 24. Therefore, shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. This is warning to today's fathers and mothers who want control For this reason, a man shall leave father and mother and cleave to his wife and they shall be
the title did that. Yes, I do. Husband and wife. It is just one person. So once he has taken his wife, you are out of the question. Whether you are the father or mother, it does not matter. But you can still advise them. But you cannot dictate to them in accordance with God's word. Okay. Verse 25. See what is there and try to understand clearly. Verse 25 says, And they were both naked. Adam and Eve, they were both naked. Bear this in mind. If you don't we carry on Wednesday to move us from here, when we come on Wednesday, then we are going to get to that place where you are waiting for. So what happened? Because you notice that when something happened, these two that said they were naked and were not touching, they became ashamed. Why? That is what we shall deal with. God bring with us next Wednesday. But I needed to do all this background so that you know exactly what we are going into and you have a proper background in your life. Remember that when God was telling Adam about that chopping of the fruit, Eve was not physically present. Always bear in mind, Eve was not physically present. But when we get to chapter 3, which is next chapter, and the serpent came talking to Eve, eh, what Eve should have done was to have referred the serpent to her husband. Who was the one that got that message directly from God? She got it secondhand through her husband. And look at the mistake she made. When she was not talking with serpent, she added her own to it. He said, God said, thou shalt not touch. But when God was talking to Adam, did you see that God said, thou shalt not touch? But she added her own. That is why God will not allow any woman to come behind any pulpit. But look at them. They, they are all over the place. Practically every Pentecostal church in Nigeria and abroad, their wives are pastors. And women are behind their pulpits. And they know that God is against it. Yet, they continue to do it because they think they can keep the word of God. I'm sorry for that woman, that wife, that daughter, that cousin, that sister in our assembly, that they tell you, oh, you are good preaching and you fall. May you not die while you are preaching in that place. Because if death meets you, you are still there calling yourself back call yourself dickiness and all of these statutes. I'm sorry, you will not see God because you have dishonored God. You have not believed God. Man shall live not by bread alone, but by every word, every, the totality of God's word is what we must believe. Not we choose the one that we want to believe and then give our own for the balance. That is religion. Religion is will worship. That is man choosing that, yes, I know there is God, he's my father, my creator, I'm worshiping, but this is how I'm going to worship him. None of us has that choice. You don't have the right to choose how you worship God. In the Bible, God laid down how he wants me, how he wants you to behave. We are not to reason it. We are not to debate it. It's not about debate. It's about obedience. Obey. And if you choose not to obey, then I disobey God, then automatically you have no business with God. Just know that carefully. If you are listening to me now, and in your church you have women playing a role of dickiness and not put a stop to it. It's contrary to God. So we we'll judge you. We have fire. 
It does not matter how people feel. It is wrong and to remain wrong. It is because of that which the woman did in the garden that I this mercy. May God keep us until next Wednesday in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Christ Jesus, thank you for telling us your word today. We are grateful and thankful to you, Lord. Come on to the child. Of you to teach us. Give us your to deceive us concerning your word in the mighty name of Jesus. Our Father and our God, we are grateful and thankful that you have blessed us with life. You have brought us to the end of this service. And we pray, Father, be with us throughout this weekend. And when we meet with you again on Sunday, we will receive some food from you in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless your children, O God, everywhere they are, bless our families. Make a way for us, O God, that we will always give time to your word. Because the only thing that we have on this earth is to hear your word so that we will be separated from the lost world. Therefore, help us to put you first is to do that which you want us to do. And the most important thing you want us to do is to your word and to carry it out. Give us the divine enablement so to do at all times in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank Father for being with us. Take all the glory, take all the honor, take all the adoration, take all the thanksgiving. For in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Graciously bless him. God bless and keep you. You will let his face upon you and be gracious unto you. You will lift his countenance upon you. God bless you. Bless and peace. Amen. Thank you for listening. God bless you and see you through the end in the mighty name of Jesus.